Hey everyone, Pastor Stephen here and welcome to Regeneration Church's 321 training video. What is 321? Now 321 stands for three people meeting for two hours one time a month. It was actually a, a concept designed by my dad, uh, Tan Su In, uh, who runs a ministry called Grace Works in Singapore. So he's written a book on it called uh, 321. And um, I can actually purchase it. I actually have a few copies in uh, my house. You can also buy it online and as an ebook. But um, 321 is a discipleship strategy that is life on life. And um, for us here at Regen, 321 exists to foster th two things, uh, life on life discipleship, as well as spiritual friendship. So let me read a definition of each of those things for us. So what is spiritual friendship? Spiritual friendship is friendship that is centered around Jesus Christ and entered into with the purpose of encouraging each other to pursue Christ, grow in Christ-likeness, as well as discern the work of Christ in each other's lives. So every uh, friendship is uh, a relationship between people built around a shared good, a common good that binds the people together. And as Christians, the common good, the common uh, interest, the common um, passion that we share that brings us together is Christ himself. Let me read uh, a definition of life on life discipleship by a guy called Randy Pope. He writes this, Life on life missional discipleship is laboring in the lives of a few with the intention of imparting one's life, the gospel, and God's word in such a way as to see them become mature and equipped followers of Christ committed to doing the same in the lives of others. So in this definition, making disciples is something that has to happen uh, at a person-to-person -person le level, a life-on-life -life, uh, level, that we impart what it means to be a Christian, not just in uh, teachings or, or books or sermons or lectures, but or Bible studies even, but actually in the sharing of a life um, with another person. And it's like Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ, that we need examples, exemplars of what it means to live the Christian life. And, and three to ones are a way that we do that for each other. Now, just some guidelines, rules or guidelines um, that what makes a three to one a three to one. Now, the first thing to say is participants must be of the same gender. Um, that um, for, for There's many good reasons for this, but, but men uh, would meet only with men and women only with women. We do not have a, a, a mixed gender a three to one. And I think that uh, will allow a level of intimacy in, in sharing that mixed gender groups um, will not. Now, the, nu the number of participants is actually very um, strict as well, that we want actually three people, um, hence three to one, um, possibly four, um, but only between three and four, not more and not less. Now, not more because once it reaches five, it becomes a lot harder, I guess, even logistically to get people to meet together. Um, and, and it loses, I guess, the level of intimacy, but not two either because the three to one really emphasizes the peer dynamic that we are um, laboring alongside each other. We're discipling each other and uh, it, it prevents, um, I guess, a more top-down approach where when there's two, two um, people, it's more, it's more easy for a kind of superior and inferior kind of dynamic to emerge. Um, the other thing that we would say for three to one is also to have a, a, a commitment. Usually it's a one-year commitment. 
and we want to agree to meet for a certain period of time. And that's really important um, because having a, a commitment is what actually makes this three to one uh, discipleship uh, triplet actually effective. Without that commitment, it will not achieve um, what it, it is designed to achieve that deep, lasting discipleship and change in people's lives. Um, and also, the other reason for having a, a fixed uh, commitment is that this, these are not lifelong groups. That if you meet with a, a, a three to one for a year, at the end you might evaluate and say, hey, um, you know, do should we continue? Or perhaps our, our circumstances have changed and that we now need to go um, our separate ways. And that's okay. Now, uh, another guideline is that every once a three to one is formed, everyone must be available um, for a three to one meeting to, to work. So a three to one does not work with only two people. Hence, you should only ever meet when all three or all four um, people are available to, to meet. I think the only exception I can think of is perhaps in a if you have a four to one and one of the four is someone that might struggle with a mental health and that you know at the drop of a hat something might change and the person might be able to might not be able to meet. And in that scenario um, perhaps it might be all right to still meet as a three to one but um, but by and large only gather when everyone is available and a fifth guideline is to find a balance between the um, uh, the organic and the organized the structured and the unstructured now the, there's two opposite dangers in a three to one and one is for it to become uh, too loose right too too organic or unstructured where basically everyone's just having a chat and everyone's discussing everything from football to food and you know it's no longer becomes about christ and discipleship um and and the other opposite end of it is when it becomes too structured too organized where it doesn't allow people to share what's really on their heart because we gotta hey gotta keep to the time uh, gotta keep to the plan and and people uh don't have the freedom to um, really say, hey, something, some, something personal has really happened. I've just, um, I've just broken up, or I've just lost my job. I've just failed my exam. Something really uh, horrible has happened, and I, 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 need, I need time to to process that with you. And and so, if we don't allow for those sort of things, um, a three to one has also failed uh, to achieve what it's meant to achieve. Now, I want to share with us. Uh, what a guy called Greg Ogden says are the three essential components for a discipleship uh, triplet to work well. Now, the first thing is the Word of God, that the triplet must be centered around the Word of God and that the Word of God must shape the time together um, that that uh, the, the, the three to one um, uh, shares. Um, if not, we will be ruled by our own thoughts and not God's thoughts. The second thing that it needs to have is transparency. That ultimately, we're developing a rapport with each other. That at some point, we will be able to be more and more open about what's really going on in our hearts. Because this is the space that we want to cultivate. Um, a, a, a culture of transparency that you know that you can be real about what's going on in your life, in your heart, and you know that you're not, you won't be judged, and and that your your confidentiality will also um, be 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 kept, and transparency is really um, important for the three to one to achieve again what it's meant to achieve, and then thirdly is accountability, that you uh, as a three to one you're keeping each other accountable in following Christ, in following Jesus in day to day. And and that means that if someone is caught in sin, that, that, that you call your brother or your sister out. If someone is not um, faithful in, in, in attending church or not faithful in reading their, their Bibles, that you, that you um, challenge them lovingly to live up to um, what God calls us to do and, and to live our lives in a manner worthy of the gospel. Now, um, because of this whole um, 
lockdown situation that we're in, we're going to be launching three to ones in a way that's um, online rather than in person. Now, so this is a template I'm going to share with us for an online three to one. Now, there's two templates and the, f the first template is for the first three meetings of your three to one and then later on um, for your subsequent meetings. So first for your first three meetings, um, this is how you should have them. Now, the first thing is to, to find an online platform. We recommend Zoom as a good platform for that. Uh, and, you know, three to ones is normally two hours once a month. But we would recommend because of this whole online dynamic, it does change things. We are now recommending um, one hour each time you meet, but two times a month. So once a fortnight and meet for an hour rather than two hours. So there are four components for your three to one gathering when you do meet. And, and, they, and these are firstly, the sharing of your story that in the first three times you meet, each person has a chance to share their life story uh, to the other two. Um, and that's a really essential um, aspect of three to one, building that friendship, building that rapport with each other. Um, the second thing that we want to be doing in a three to one is a Bible study that each time when you do meet a different person leads the others in a study of the Bible. And part of that as well, I want to suggest is accountability or uh, surrounding your personal devotional Bible reading. So just be um, honest and share how are you going meeting the Lord in um, in the, in reading of his word and in prayer. How's that been going? What sort of reading plan are you following? Um, and just share a little bit about what God has been doing, how you've been reading God's word and how he's been speaking to you. Um, the third element um, for a three to one meeting is prayer. So spend some time praying for each other. And I would recommend starting off with two things, uh, a praise point um, and a prayer request. So one thing that you're really thankful to God for, um, that you want to want to publicly give him thanks for, and also a prayer request, something that you need his help for, that you, you want to ask your brothers or your sisters to help um, pray for. And then fourthly, the final um, part of your meeting is to plan. Basically, say, okay, we'll finish this meeting. Where will we meet next time? Uh, sorry, or when rather, who are we meeting online, right? When will we meet next time? And um, who will be in charge of the different things? Who is going to share um, his or her story next? And who is going to be in charge of leading the um, Bible study next? So you see how assigning the roles for the next meeting is an essential part of the gathering that you have that structure. Once you finish, you know what's happening for the next meeting. Now, I just want to share quickly about what um, sharing your story looks like. We recommend two approaches to sharing your story. And the first is um, the three turning points approach. Um, and what that means is rather than sharing, you know, your whole life story, which go forever and ever, think about three really important moments that happen in your life. What are three key events that happened and that really shaped who you are today and share those three turning points in your life. A second approach that we recommend is the gospel outline approach. It's a bit more complicated than the three turning points, but the four gospel points of gospel outline are creation, fall, redemption, and new creation. And so try and apply that to your own life. So for creation, that's the origin story, isn't it, of, of, of the Bible. And so what's your origin story? Where did you grow up? What was your family like growing up? Um, what were the events that formed you um, as a young person? Um, fall. What is a major crisis um, in your life that has shaped you? What's a negative experience that has impacted you greatly? Uh, third, um, redemption. How has Jesus transformed you? Or how has he led you through that crisis? And now I think 
for for a lot of people, um, they might they they might have a, a very dramatic conversion testimony where the f- that where their where the fall and redemption that's how they became a Christian, but that's not the case for many others actually. Where you may have had a a more gradual uh, conversion as, as a young person growing up in church, and there was no real uh, dramatic moment. There was no like you know Saul falling off the 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 the, the horse and God appearing in a you know, Jesus appearing in a in a in a vivid vision moment. Um, so, but that's okay. Think of a, a crisis moment that could have happened when you already were a Christian, and how did Jesus help guide you through that? And then fourthly, new creation. Um, what's your life like now as a follower of Jesus? What does it look like uh, now that you're someone who follows Jesus? How does Jesus impact your uh, daily life today? So that's the gospel outline approach. Now, just uh, some some kind of gu- a few rules for for um, sharing your story. The first is the time frame. So share your story within around fifteen minutes. Uh, don't go for too long. Um, and what, the second is when the, the storyteller is sharing their story for the others to not in, interrupt them, that he or she should be able to finish telling uh, the entire story. And that's really important. The third thing is then once the storyteller has finished the story, that the others can ask him or her questions about his or her story. Um, and finally, once that question time is over for um, someone to then pray for the storyteller that would be really nice now i want now I want to talk about the bible study approach a very simple bible study approach that we're um, recommending is the swedish um, method to bible study now this is this is such a simple thing that it doesn't matter if you're a brand new christian you became a christian um, just a month ago or something you're still able to use this method because it's only three things and anyone can can lead with those th- uh, three things. And so imagine three, uh, uh, I guess, uh, icons, the first being a light bulb. So take a, a passage that you have read yourself in your own devotional um, Bible reading and use that same passage to lead your three to one um, uh, at time together in the word um, using what God has used to speak to you personally. And but just ask these three things. First is a light bulb um, and, and ask what stands out to you from this passage or from this story? Uh, and everyone can take turns to share. Now the second um, icon is a, a question mark. So what um, uh, questions arise from this um, passage that 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 arises in your mind from this passage and you might try to answer them together as well and finally is an arrow so an application now how should we live in light of what we've just heard from god's word what's the application um, for us to live in our lives today it's a very simple method and i think anyone can actually use this so i encourage you to be using this in your three to ones and finally, I want to talk about an ongoing template um, for our online three to ones. So once you've done the first three, right? Everyone has already shared their story. Um, what happens now? So there's four components um, in uh, the, the ongoing meetings. Now, in, so the first thing is just a sharing more broadly. Instead of um, one person sharing the story for 15 minutes, in future meetings, each person can share one main thing that has happened in their life um, since the last time uh, you met as a three to one. So that way, maybe each person can share for five minutes what uh, major thing has happened uh, in their life. Um, the next thing to do is, uh, again, a Bible study. So that doesn't change. Uh, spend uh, 15 to, uh, to, to 25 minutes even uh, in, in God's word. And, um, and then after that, uh, also prayer, but I think with on in ongoing meetings, um, I think hopefully by then the rapport between you has 
uh, strengthened so that you can add an extra component to your times of prayer. And that is confession. So you've got praise and and pr- praise point and prayer point. But what about a confession point? What would it look like for each person to confess just one sin in their life? And I think that is such a powerful thing that we are missing um, as evangelicals, we are missing actually as Protestants, um, is what it says in James 5, confess your sins to one another. Not to a priest um, and not to, a, not to God directly, but to a brother or a sister. And I think that is greatly helpful spiritual practice for us in our discipleship. And then finally, of course, spend some time to plan um, your next uh, three-to-one meeting. So hopefully um, that makes sense now, the four components again. Um, it's either sharing stories or just sharing more broadly. Um, the second one is Bible study. The third one is prayer. And the fourth one is plan. And there you have it. You have hopefully... Um, all the components to start your three to one, um, maybe today. Uh, and if you need more help or you, you don't know who to ask to be part of your three to one, please approach myself or Pastor Paul and we will be very pleased to help you get started. Thanks. <laughs>